Hello everybody and welcome to this webinar from Nordic Institute of Dental Materials. My name is Simon Kopperud and I am a dentist and a senior scientist at NEOM. And today I have brought a colleague from the University of Oslo, Pia Titterusunde, who is head of the Department of Endodontics at the Faculty of Dentistry. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> and the topic of today's webinar is endodontics. So, um, I think the first thing, uh, at least I as a dentist would be interested to know more about is how successful is endodontic, endodontic treatment. When I was a student, uh, we kind of um, had some uh, rate success rates that we talked about, uh, but that is 20 years ago. What is mm -hmm. things like today? Well, it's uh, pretty much the same. If you, if you look at the clinical studies um, and look at the success rate of endodontic treatment, you see that the success rate is quite high. It's between 70 and 90 percent. Uh, it's uh, important to remember, though, that uh, these treatments are performed in specialist clinics, it's performed in dental schools, where um, students, faculty and staff and, and postgraduate students have performed the treatment. So it's a really um, controlled environment uh, under ideal conditions. On the other side, if you look at the population uh, and just pick some people, adult people from a population and take a, uh, um, radiographs of them, you see that APQ periodontitis is quite prevalent disease with more than 40% of the individuals having APQ periodontitis. And you also see that of rootful teeth, as much as 50% of the rootful teeth have APQ periodontitis. So it is a discrepancy between studies performed in clinics or faculties um, and in the population. Mm. And so we say that um, the success rate will vary much um, um, due to the, the cause of the needle, needle treatment. So there's a big difference between apical periodontitis and vital teeth. Yeah, it's a, it's a big difference if you treat a, um, a teeth with apical periodontitis because the whole root canal is infected with microorganisms. And if a, teeth has a, if a tooth has a, um, a lesion, you know that it is an infection and it's more difficult to eradicate the infection from the root canal. If you have a vital tooth with no apical lesion or you have a necrotic pulp, the success rate is higher. But the discrepancy between the, the success rates between the population and the clinical studies could also mean that maybe sometimes in the general practice the, the high quality of an adult treatment might not be performed as good as it should mm -hmm. be, sometimes. Yeah, because that, <clears throat> of course, leads us into a more um, and, and subject which is, which is a bit uh, uncomfortable to speak about, but which <laughs> factors from a clinical point of view has um, the most meaning for the success of the treatment uh, when regular dentists do endodontics? Uh, or which things may go wrong compared with what, what a perfect solution would be? Yeah, well, let's start about... Um aseptic procedure. It, you know that uh, microorganism is the cause of apical periodontitis, it's the cause of endodontic disease, and then it's quite crucial to have an aseptic working field uh, during the, the treatment. So, for example, rubber dam has been used by dentists in more than, than 100 years. It's essential to use, um, not, not only because of the contamination, the risk of contamination without the rubber dam, but also the risk of um, aspirating mm, files. Yes. And also it has been shown actually that dentists, the, they don't use as much irrigation as they should if they don't use the rubber dam properly. Because they are afraid that they will get... Uh, yeah, the, because the it's very comfortable <coughs> for the patient if you... Um, mm, if spill you, something. Yeah, yeah, the... yeah, in their throat and mm, everything. And yeah, that's a very... If you have the rubber dam, you can just use sodium hypochlorite as much as you like. Mm. So, so, the, so the rubber dam is good both for the patient and the dentist, kind of? Uh, it's, uh, it's very good and it's <coughs> sometimes you think that maybe it's uh, difficult to, 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 to apply it, but the patients, uh, even when you ask them, most of them think it's quite good to have it. Mm. So what about the, um, the measurements? Um, um, one of the difficult things uh, is when, when I do endodontics, at least, is to the first steps that I, that I get the, 
the correct uh, distance to the apex, for mm -hmm, instance? Mm -hmm. how, how important are those factors? Well, um, it has been shown in quite a lot of studies that uh, the root filling, the quality of the root filling is important for a good result. So, um, monitored by radiographs, it should be approximately one millimeter from the radiographic ap apex. And it is also important that um, if it is too short, the prognosis, the success rate will, will lower a lot. And it also, if it's too long, hmm. it will also lower. If it's over overextended? Uh, yeah, overextended root fillings is not good. Hmm. So, it has also been shown that the homogeneity uh, of the root fillings uh, is important for the success rate. If mm. it, there is a lot of voids, the success rate will lower, as shown okay. by radiographs. But what about, um, uh, I seem to remember that when we had vital teeth, we could have a little bit longer distance to the apex. That's, that's a good point, because this is especially <coughs> shown if you have apical periodontitis. When you have apical periodontitis and infection of the root canal, it is very important to have this the, the good root filling. If you have mm. a vital tooth, it is important, but not that important. Okay. Because the infection is not that deep into okay. the canal. That's okay. right. So, but how about <clears throat> um, today we have also new technical solutions like the rotating instruments. Uh, previously we used uh, only files. What mm -hmm. do you think about rotating instruments? Should we use uh, those? Will well, that give a better um, uh, longevity? Uh, you can maybe the endodontics will be more, more fun and it's uh, may sometimes maybe easier to achieve a good results but uh, clinical studies you know you have a lot of instruments today a lot of techniques but uh, clinical results they do not really show uh, very good results with one technique or one file and it has also been shown that if you use um, nickel titanium instruments mm -hmm. Like, like, the old, like uh, uh, the old way, yeah. yeah, it's just as good as a, a rotary file or a reciprocating file. Okay. But of course, if you use stainless steel, it's not that easy to achieve um, the, the root canal shape. Oh. The maintenance of the root canal is easier with the nickel titanium. And because they are more flexible. Yeah, than, because they're more yeah. flexible, it's easier to achieve the, the good result. But what kind of... Uh, I know there are different kinds of rotating instruments. Uh, could you uh, explain how the two, the, all the different systems work? A very um, briefly, to be very short, you have uh, rotary instruments, that's rotating, mm -hmm. and you have recipro uh, reciprocating files. That's a little bit different, but uh, the, the good results can be achieved with both of them. Mm. So you have a lot of... Um, Lot so, of, so, uh, yeah. so it actually doesn't matter which which we choose uh, or if we choose anyway at all. It, as it, long as yeah, we, it seems as like as a good result can be achieved with everything. Mm. Yeah, as long as we do all the other things yeah, correct. That's true. <clears throat> Yeah, and, and of course that also um, leads us into, I know that some people uh, like to do now, previously we always did two-step uh, endodontics uh, when we had especially apical, uh, apical periodontitis. Mm -hmm. We all, always placed um, uh, calcium hydroxide uh, inlay and let it, left it there for a couple of weeks. Uh, but nowadays I hear that many people say that you don't need to do that anymore. What do you think about that? Well, it is um, often discussed if you can do a um, single visit treatment or you should do a, a multiple visit treatment. And of course, uh, clinical studies, randomized clinical studies have shown that uh, just as good results can be achieved with, with single visit treatments. But it's also uh, important to remember that those uh, studies are also performed in well-controlled environments. Mm -hmm. Uh, with um, where everything is controlled and, and in, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the thing to remember is to clean, have a proper uh, chemomechanical treatment and uh, good disinfection with, the, with, the sodium or with irrigants and, and that is the number one goal. So for example, for a molar, it takes time mm -hmm. and the, not the goal is to do it in one the goal should not be to do it in no, one treatment. No. The goal should be to do a proper uh, cleaning of the root canal. And that takes time, so we actually need, uh, you need, need some time, time to, yeah. to do it. It's, uh, <clears throat> of course, if you have a, a single root canal and you're very, very sure that everything is done properly and you have cleaned and done everything and then the patient comes from far, mm. far away, you could 
uh, even and, and though you have a full day, uh, and, full day yeah, uh, of course, and uh, then uh, it's, it's yeah. good to do it in one treatment. But uh, for a molar, for example, it takes time. Hmm. So, so the the it's also important to remember that the um, calcium hydroxide inlay, as you as you mentioned, it is still a good inlay to to to, hmm. to put in the canal. So if you have a short of time, you can spend much time doing the preparation, and then then you have uh, kind of bought yourself a little time by yeah. doing it into yeah. sessions. Yeah, yeah, of course. And then you hmm. put the calcium hydroxide, and then you can have another session with proper irrigation. Maybe you find the MB2, for example, mm -hmm. the next day, and then the next treatment, and then you can fill the canal. Mm. And it, it was thought before that calcium hydroxide um, rendered bacteria-free canals, but uh, calcium hydroxide is not that bacteria. Um, it's not killing okay. as much as bacteria as we thought before, okay. but it's yeah. still a good uh, inlay. Hmm. So, but you, but you don't do anything wrong by doing it one step, no, as long as you do the proper that's true. instrumentation and irrigation. That's true. <clears throat> so, what about um, uh, when we have um, we have done the treatment and we use the irrigation? Uh, which uh, fluids do, do you recommend for irrigation? Today? Well, the endodontic society of endodontics they they um, have guidelines that you should use a disinfectant that kills microorganisms, of course, but also have tissue so dissolving properties, and that then sodium hypochlorite is a very good choice, mm. still. Which yeah. we still use 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's still a good <clears throat> choice, and then you should uh, remove the SME layer, and then you could use EDTA. Mm. So it's still the same. But some people talk about chlorhexidine. Well, uh, yes, it's also disinfectant, but it does uh, disinfectant, but it doesn't um, uh, it doesn't dissolve the the tissue. It has yeah. been it has been uh, shown that it's m more potent against uh, gram positive microorganisms, for example. So it it can be used, but but um, I think sodium hypochlorite is the the standard. And because would you use uh, chlorhexidine as a substitute or just as uh, another? So we can use three. Uh, yeah, it is you. It is also used as a protocol, for example, sodium hydrochloride and then EDTA and then uh, completely drying because you should not mix chlorhexidine and sodium hypochlorite. Yeah. Then you get the precipitate that could block and is mm. also carcinogen carcinogenic. So it is um, good to dry it properly and then you could use chlorhexidine um, as an inlay for, for irrigation okay. for a short time. Yeah. Trying to kill, for example, <coughs> in retreatment procedures, you can as, try as to a, kill. As a separate step? As a actually. separate step, yeah. Mm. That's a kind of a protocol that some use, okay. actually, to, mm. to kill gram positive microorganisms. But it's important to dry between mm. the sessions and not mix all the irrigants oh, together. Oh, of course. Okay, so then, <clears throat> then we have um, instrumented um, the canals and uh, and uh, we are placing the um, uh, endodontic material. Yeah. Um, which endodontic materials do we have today? Yeah. Still, uh, we have a lot actually, but we are still. I think the the gutta percha is still the the, the standard uh, reference. Um, hmm. It's nothing that could actually replace it today. So it's still the, it's the still preferred the material. Percha, yeah. Hmm. It should be inert and and. Uh, yeah. It's a good material. And, and that is the most commonly used material, yeah. I guess, uh, yeah, I get the among clinicians. Yeah. And <coughs> when it comes to the sealer, I think, um, uh, well, uh, HA plus is still the gold standard. It has a lot of studies that have shown that it's very good results. And we have a lot of sealers on the market today that is um, uh, that has not proven to be better than HA yeah. plus. So. Yeah. So you can still use it with the it's still, good That conscious. is still the yeah. gold standard. Yeah. That is interesting, interesting for me because that was what I learned in dental school 20 years ago yes, and it's still, yeah. still valid. Yeah, it's still valid, <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, it's impressive. We have a lot of <coughs> studies regarding that sealer, so. And of course, uh, here at uh, Neum we are interested about uh, in testing our materials. Um, and uh, with all, all kind of new materials coming to the market, it's very mm -hmm. important to have this kind of gold standard that you can test, test them and check That's if they are better or... or that is um, true. It's always the refer reference material <coughs> mm. use, used in laboratory studies and mm. also in clinical studies. So it's very good to know that uh, that's, uh, the old school is still, uh, yeah. still vital. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> kind of. 
Um, I know that you have had um, some um, cooperation with um, uh, researchers that have checked uh, if it works to have clinical um, training in endodontics. Uh, mm -hmm. You participated in a, in a scientific study where clinicians uh, yeah. got some teaching in, uh, in uh, endodontics uh, yes. and uh, they wanted to evaluate if they their uh, endodontics became better. Uh, yes. Tell something about uh, that? Yeah, we have. Uh, th that was a quite interesting study. That the, um, one PhD student she looked into whether a continuous course over two days, where she introduced um, machine-driven instruments and taught them properly how to do endodontics. And, uh, and then she looked at the, the clinical performance of, of before and after the course. And unfortunately, uh, there was not very much improvement. And other courses than my others, for example, in Sweden, uh, introducing uh, machine-driven files, they, they have found that maybe the technical quality becomes better, but might not but not the prognosis oh. of, of the treatment. And that might be that. It's not only the root filling quality that matters, it's also how we perform the treatment with good aseptic techniques and, mm. and everything you should do properly. It could also be that the dentist in that study uh, had more difficult teeth, you know, after the course. Mm. And everything was adjusted for, but that was kind of a little bit uh, disappointing results. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, I re still recommend going to, to courses in endodontics, even if it maybe it takes a little bit more to do good endodontics. Yeah. You should train after the course as, as well mm. and do um, a lot to be better yes. because treating molars has been proven difficult. So studies or clinical studies and also uh, epidemiological studies have shown that it is more APK periodontitis on molars and it's... Okay, on, on the previously treated uh, yeah. molars? Yeah, yeah, because it's more difficult. Mm. It's difficult to find a canal system the, the placement in the mouth mm. and yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, more technically complicated. But yeah. of course, everything you do many times, you, you get better every time you do That's something. True. And and maybe it could be in 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 that case that they uh, tried more difficult treatments. Uh, of to, course. To fast. Yeah, uh, that's that's true. That's also why I tell the student that you train now under proper conditions and, and get uh, good training while mm. they're at the dental school, so they can go and know how to do it and follow that guidelines. Mm. So you should just continue practicing. Yeah. Um, okay, so, but finally we have talked about, um, I think I have talked about most that we need to, to talk about, but uh, just finally about the new um, new endodontic materials. I know we have had, you have had some cooperation with Neom. Uh, yes. We had a couple of uh, scientists doing some research here that mm -hmm. are publishing their that mm. works at this That's true. These days. We had um, one PhD candidate that is, uh, has finished and one is still going. Um, and uh, th there's a cooperation between the faculty, as you said, and NEUM. And they have looked into sealers and if, if for example, irrigation solutions like coraxidine could uh, alter the, the conditions of the sealers and also the antimicrobial properties. And also if the setting conditions, uh, mm. trying to have a more clinical setting, like uh, in setting in water, and f that's not clinical setting, but uh, fetal bovine serum, for example. Mm. So, so they, they find some, some yeah, yeah. alterations in the sealers' properties. Yeah, okay. And they've been yeah. testing um, new sealers on the market, like ceramic-based mm. sealers, for example. So they have done a really good job at NEO. Hmm. So we are kind of testing the new things, uh, but still keeping hold of the old, uh, old yeah, materials. Yeah, because it takes that, so. time, you know, and we have some, some examples, for example, that uh, sealers test very good at, uh, in laboratory studies, and they have good clinical performance in one year, but after some years, hmm. something happens. So it's, all, it's always good to be uh, a little cautious yeah, about what you, you you start using mm. when you're a dentist and try new sealers. And to look for um, for the long clinical trials. Uh, long clinical trials. <coughs> to, to see how it actually works in... Yeah. in uh, That's why we use HA plus for, as a gold mm. standard still. Mm. 
Okay, I think we have covered most of it, and maybe just to conclude, um, the most important things to to get get good longevity of the um, of the uh, root fillings would be just to practice as much as possible yes. and to follow all your all your um, um, guidelines and uh, do the aseptics. Uh, follow the guidelines. Yeah. Do the aseptic. Uh, follow the aseptic techniques and do a good root filling. And, and just uh, keep keep up the good work, and then we'll be better and better every yeah. time. And it's also remembered. Uh, I forgot the the coronal restoration is also yes. important for for a good quality endodontics. With the yeah, that was actually the last thing I was going yeah. to talk about because we're going through the whole process. But of course, mm. uh, let's do that at last. The the, the top filling. Yeah. Uh, how would you do that? What kind of material would you recommend to do it? Well, we, we recommend to seal off, steer off a little bit of the gutta percha so that you could use uh, tight iron plugs. Mm, down in the canals. Down uh, in the canals so you, you can hinder, you know, bacterial leakage, bacterial leakage into the mm. root canal. And then, of course, there should be a, a good coronal, uh, tight coronal restoration so you don't get leakage. And also, that is also important for the survival of the tooth. If you don't get the crown or a proper uh, coronal restoration, studies have shown that um, the prognosis, the survival of the tooth will be much lower. But is, is that the survival of the tooth because it fractures? Or that's is it, true. Uh, so it, that, that has nothing to do <coughs> with the apical lesion because no. that's the prognosis. And, that is better uh, because you don't uh, have the leakage, but the mm. survival, like uh, to, to prevent fracture, is better if you have a proper coronal prosthetic, uh, prosthetic yeah. treatment. Post -end <coughs> and and um, uh, the leakage, the IRM plugs. Could uh, prevent leakage. Yeah, and IRM is still also the that best. Is, uh, uh, you could use cavit, also some use that, but it's also tight, but it's not very. You yeah, should not use that as a coronal. No, feeling, no, but, not. No, no. but cavity is also an old material and yeah. IRM is an old material. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't <laughs> have anything new. new that we can use. No, uh, no, <laughs> they still, uh, it's still what we use. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay, so then I think we can conclude this <laughs> webinar about uh, endodontics. I mean, I've learned quite a lot today, I think. So thank you very much for coming uh, to NEOM. Thank you and for coming. With this. Thank you. Thank you.